The single most important aspect of any listing that will make or break the success of your product is the photos. In this video, I'll show you the four keys to having the best product photos and how you can get them. But first, my name is Crescent, and on my channel, I share tips and strategy videos, just like this one, and how you can create a successful Amazon FBA private label business. So if you enjoy videos like this, consider subscribing. All right, let's get started. When I was in college getting my first degree in industrial design, one factor my professor ingrained in us was that there's three levels of detail. The first level being when you observe a product from a distance. What can you notice and perceive? The second is a medium distance, and third is the detail you see when you're up close and personal. And these distances are, of course, all relative to what the product is. If it's a building versus a car or a watch, for example, the distances will vary. So how does this apply to Amazon and your product photos? Well, if you think about human behavior, we're a very visually oriented creature. That's why our visual acuity is extremely high. Evolutionarily, we relied heavily on our vision to survive. We have very large eyes, and they're both pointed directly forward for that exact purpose. So when we're shopping online, for example, and we're scrolling through a list of products, this is the first level of detail. It's far easier for our human minds to comprehend and recognize colors and shapes than it is to read text. So that's why we tend to look at the thumbnails of the products first. And this doesn't just apply to shopping online. Think about how you found this video. Did you scroll through the list of YouTube videos reading the titles or looking at the thumbnails? So the first thing that catches a person's eyes is the thumbnail, which is why it's vital that at the very least, you have the best main photo for your listing. The second level is when a buyer reads the title, price, and the reviews. And the third is when they visit your listing and take a closer look at your photos and the listing copy. So as you can see, with the photos playing such a prominent role in how someone perceives your product to make a buying decision, the first key to having the best photos is quality. So you need to understand that the quality of your photos directly translates to how someone perceives the quality of your product. So a poor quality set of photos will lead to someone perceiving that you also have a poor quality product. So the level of quality can be broken down into a few things. The first being the equipment. You need to have a good camera and you need to have good lighting. Those are the two main factors. You also need to be conscious of the environment that you're taking the photos in, whether that's in a studio or in a controlled environment, especially if you're doing lifestyle photos. One thing you wanna keep in mind though is that just by having a good camera doesn't mean you're gonna produce good quality photos. And that's an issue that I see happening online all the time where people will go buy a fancy camera and think they're all of a sudden a professional photographer. Being a good photographer takes an artistic eye and artistic talent. So that's why if you don't have an artistic eye or experience shooting product photos, I highly recommend that you hire a professional product photographer. A professional product photographer will have that artistic eye and talent to know how to do product placement and composition. And those are key aspects to producing quality product photos. For example, if we jump onto Google and take a look at poor product photography, right at the top here, you can see some examples of poor product photos. Like let's take a look at this one. You can see here on the left, the lighting is very poor, it's dim. And this one as well. And if you look at this one, it, the product is out of focus and this one is blurry. And I'm sure we've all seen during product research examples of listings that have photos just like these ones, right? And for example, like this Clamato one here, again, it's not lit very well. You can see a shadow and the contrast is very poor. Whereas if you look at the one on the right, this looks like a magazine professional quality product photo here, okay? And here's another example of a set of poor photos, okay? The main photo here, I'm assuming the product should be white, but you can tell in the photo that it's not white because the background is pure white, but the product itself looks like they left it out in the sun and it faded, okay? Let's click on that actually. Now if we take a look at the second photo, look at how much clutter there is. I don't know if they're selling me these pineapples or this apple or these plants. And if it is these silicone placemats, why are they crooked? I would never use 
my placemats like this or display it like that, okay? It doesn't make any sense. And if we go at the next photo, same thing. Who uses their placemats like this, right? You would never place them crooked and sideways as they've shown in this photo. So there's a disconnect there. It's not creating any emotional connection with the person buying this, okay? So if we move on to this photo here, the biggest thing that caught my eye is poor composition and poor product placement, okay? First, the table's dirty, okay? Why is this wine glass full and this one empty? And I'm OCD, right? Look at this placemat, why is it crooked compared to the edge of the table? And the biggest thing is, is this lasagna, it looks like it exploded in the oven. Clean the pan, I mean, this looks terrible, okay? The quality of this photo is just terrible, all right? And even with this one here, the product placement is poor. Like this hand is just in a weird position. No one would hold their wine glass this way to cheer someone, right? And then this knife is crooked over here and there's a knife in an awkward angle just hanging over here. It just doesn't look very good, okay? In comparison, we go to Target and just look at some of their dinnerware photos and stuff. Look at this, how, look how beautiful this composition is. Everything is perfectly placed and clean. And someone folded this napkin perfectly so the light catches it, right? Okay, and added some herbs here and stuff and the table is perfectly clean and there's no folds and the light falls on it and there's the light and shadow and the contrast is perfect on this, okay? And like even this one, look at how beautiful this uh, composition is for this photo. There's a rhyme and reason for everything that's in this photo. Nothing is misplaced and it's beautiful to look at. The color and the placement of the products make this an excellent quality photo, okay? So if you're not sure, compare your photos to magazines or some top name brand companies and what their photos look like, okay? The second key to having good photos is you need to tell a story with your set of photos. The key is creating an emotional connection with the buyer. Because you gotta remember when someone's looking to purchase a product, they're trying to solve a problem. They need to be able to envision themselves using your product to solve that problem. One thing that I learned early in marketing is that people take action really fundamentally based on two factors, either to reduce pain or increase pleasure. So think about that for a second. How can you communicate the features and benefits of your product so that it reduces the pain or increases the pleasure for that buyer? In your set of photos, it should lead a person down a path of how that product's being used and what kind of features and benefits that it can give that user so that they can envision themselves using that product and solving the problem that they're trying to solve. For example, if we take a look at this baby caddy product here, this is a great example of us telling a story with their photos. You can see that the quality of this main photo is superior. It's got a pure white background. The product is in focus, right? Let's click on that so we can blow it up. And everything is neat and tidy and well folded and placed inside this product. And if we go down the list of photos, it's telling a story. So if we look at the second photo, it now shows the product closed, what it looks like when it's zipped up and it's giving us the dimensions, right? easy, clear, and concise. It's not cluttered with any extraneous, uh, useless information. And now this is a great lifestyle photo. The main product is in focus. It's got a blurred background. Everything's clean and tidy. The photographer thought about what to put here. It's not just some random things in the background. So as a person visiting this product listing, I can envision this product in my home and what it would look like. If we move on, we can see an excellent before and after photo. So I'm attending to this child and if you have this huge mess, buy my baby caddy, your mess will be gone, right? Look how easy it is. You don't even have to use any words. Just by showing two photos, it communicates that to the buyer. And if we take a look at the next photo, again, this is awesome because there's no text. The person doesn't even need to read anything and it's communicating all this information. Buy my cat, baby caddy, and you're gonna be happy and your life is gonna be great. And everything's well organized and it can sit in the back seat. And just this one inset photo here, it shows that if I'm not using it, it's small and compact and it'll fit inside a piece of luggage. Okay? And then this shows some close up details. 
and with some uh, taglines here, which aren't even necessary because the photos are great, they're clear, and it's showing exactly the detail that they want to point out, right? The stitching here, the zipper here, the handle here, okay? And again, these are clear, beautifully lit photos, and it's showing what you can do with the features that it has. Some more clear photos here showing what you can do, different options you can do with it. And then the last photo here, just another close up. Okay, so that's an example of telling a story and leading the buyer down this path so they can imagine if they had it, what they can do with it and what it can do for them and what kind of problems it's gonna solve. So they build this emotional connection. And so it's showing that this seller understands the position the buyer is in and their product is gonna solve the problems that the buyer has. Now, moving on to the third aspect of how you can have the best photos is text overlays. And here's where people tend to overuse this feature, okay? So what's a text overlay? If we go back to this baby caddy, the text overlays are any text that accompany the photo. Like this one, it's just the size of the product, the length, width, and the height. And it's used sparingly, right? And it's clear and concise. And if we look at the other photos again, you can see it's just got a heading here and then very simple phrases describing what that photo is. Now in contrast, if we take a look at this baby caddy, you can see that this is just cluttered and there's so much stuff going on in this photo that I don't even want to read it, okay? Like just the pattern alone on this uh, baby caddy is distracting enough and now it's got all these text that makes it even more distracting, okay? And the font here is super small, so it's harder to read. And then if we take a look at, you know, just this graphic design is just very poor, like this coloring is bad, okay? And it's just, nobody wants to read this. If we look at the other baby caddy, this one here, this has no text and I'm getting so much information from this. But if we look at this one, why even clutter this up with this text? I don't wanna read this, okay? And this one here is even worse. It's got balloons here that detract from this product, all right? And then this one here is just a mess. Nobody wants to read this stuff, right? So use text sparingly. Now, to just give you another example, if we take a look at this hooded baby towel, you can see here they just have small text here, free gift, some text here to accompany these photos. Again, some small text here just to describe what the product is. Use text sparingly to highlight what you're trying to describe or communicate in the photo, right? Size, okay? Don't clutter it up. All right, so the fourth key to having good photos is testing. Once you get a set of photos, you can't just stop there because thinking that it's good enough is the wrong mentality and mindset to have. You need to put those photos out in the wild and see how well they perform. Some photos will perform better than others, especially as the main photo. And this is called split testing. So you wanna take what you think is the best photo as the main photo, let it run for a week or two and see how well it converts and then test another photo again for a week or two and see how well that one converts and continually optimize until you find the best set of photos, okay? Just thinking it's good enough is not. And one thing I wanna point out here is you need to get an unbiased opinion when you're getting feedback for your photos or anything else actually because A, you are your own worst critic, okay? Most people give themselves way too much credit. Just because you put some time and effort into something doesn't mean that it's the best quality work that you can get. It might be the best quality work that you can do, but it's not the best quality work. You can hire someone to do something better, okay? So don't think that just because you did it that it's good enough. Hire someone else or ask someone else to get an unbiased opinion. And one thing you need to be sensitive to is that you can't trust your friends and family because they're always gonna tell you what you think you wanna hear and not hurt your feelings, okay? so. How can you get these types of photos? Well, the easiest way is to look on a website called fiverr.com. And I would type in here a search for product photographer. Okay, product photography. All right, and the key here is you really get what you pay for. So you, what you wanna do is look through here and see what kind of quality they're able to produce. So for example, you can see here, this uh, photographer starts at $50, this one starts at five, and you can see how many reviews they have, right? This one only has three 
for this one that has 315. So let's take a look. What we can do is look through the sample photos they have. This is like their portfolio. And you look through here and see if this is the level of quality that you envision or it's the type of style that you want for your photos, okay? So let's go back and we'll take a look at another one here. See, like this one's $175. Let's see why they're so expensive, right? Let's click on them and let's see what they have to offer. And you can see the level of quality of this one is superior than the first one we just looked at. Look how beautiful this photo is, right? And the quality of that photo. These photos just look so much better, but you can see this is $175 versus that last one is uh, $5, right? <laughs> okay, so you can see the difference in the quality there. Okay, now as far as copy or the overlay text for a photo, this is where you should get someone that's experienced in doing that as well. For example, a professional graphic designer. So what I would search for here is a product sell sheet and click on search. And here's where people do professional graphic design to add that copy for products. So again, go through here and kind of find someone that has that style that you're after for your photos. So for example, if you take a look at this freelancer here, they charge $10 for one page and you can see the level of quality they have. So this one's a um, cream or lotion or something. And they've taken the photos and laid them out here on the page with beautiful copy here and uh, some descriptions of what, it, what the features and benefits are, right? And you can see how well they've laid out this page here with some uh, leaves in the background and the layout and the composition for the products, right? And you can see here they've done little uh, thumbnails with the titles and descriptions for those uh, close-up photos. Okay, so again, look through their portfolios and find someone that has the style and the level of quality that you're after, okay? You really get what you pay for. Now, a pro tip here is that you don't necessarily need to have a photograph taken of your product. For example, one of my products, I actually got 3D renderings done. And the key there was that my product was difficult to photograph. And so I decided to have it 3D rendered because once it's a digital version of my product, it can be lit very well in virtual world and then it can be placed into a real lifestyle photo and it looks like a real product, okay? So what you do here is look for a 3D, uh, just look for 3D rendering. And it's not that expensive, okay? So if you look through here, again, there's different skill levels too. So you wanna look through here and look for uh, freelancers that can do high level uh, renderings. So for example, like this one here is, uh, starts at $30. I will create a 3D rendering for you, for your Amazon product. I mean, that looks like it's a, a real product, right? But it's not, this is a 3D rendered product, okay? If you scroll through here, I mean, if these are 3D rendered, they look real to me. And I think that's an Arduino or something. And I mean, the quality of this uh, freelancer is excellent, okay? So the thing is, is they can take this 3D rendering and then you can put it into any background that you like, right? So for example, this looks like it's on a concrete table and you can put it into any other background and you can orient your uh, 3D model to fit that uh, lifestyle photo. And it ends up actually being cheaper because hiring a photographer to set up a lifestyle set or higher models gets expensive. Okay, whereas if, once you have that 3D model made, you can uh, take stock photos and insert your digital product into that stock photo. Okay, so that's a pro tip for you. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. And if you'd like to learn more about how to optimize your listing, check out these videos here. All right, thanks for watching. If you found value in this video, you know what to do. Hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. And make sure you click that bell icon to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. There's also a link in the description to our community forums, which you should totally join. And as always, thanks for watching.